Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And your boy, Stanley. All right, let's go ahead and get the good stuff out the way first. Then we're going to go into something a little bit better, I guess, this mm -hmm. review. But first of all, thank you all so, 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 so much. Yeah. Last week, I, I gave out a call to action. Y'all came through. I only needed like 40 subscribers over there on their other channel so that I won't lose my partnership with YouTube and whatnot. Not only did y'all get me 40, y'all got me like 2,000 more than what I needed. Yeah. So this is what I'm going to have y'all to do this week. Because it ain't just about me. We have a family over here. Yeah. Um, us small YouTubers. And we look out for each other. And that's that's the way we all grow. We grew because people like James, Lady Nika, different people like that were just shouting our channels out. Mm -hmm. And a whole lot of y'all came over from that. So, therefore, I have to return the favor. And I need you all to go over to these four channels that I'm about to mention. And go ahead and show them the same kind of love by hitting that subscribe button that y'all exactly. did to us last exactly. week. Exactly. We have Kenny Starlin. He does reviews and all that kind of stuff. If you like us, you like him. Got Kenny Lou. He does the same exact thing. And actually, he does some lives and all that. I caught a live of his last week. And we were on there just cutting up and acting a fool. Yeah. Um, and my sis, My Twisted Life Poetry. Real cool sis. She does um a lot of shows. She does shows I've never <laughs> even heard of. But she's very entertaining, very thorough. And she also sent me this book. Now, mm -hmm. it's an erotic book. So, this ain't your thing. Close your eyes. But y'all go ahead. And she's going to start doing... I think she did one already. She does... um lives and she's going to actually start dissecting the book and going through different titles of erotic things and erotic stories and yeah. your fetishes and stuff that you ain't supposed to be talking about but you're going to talk about it on the yeah. live go on over there and then everybody know might be y'all know might be but might be and his um cousin has a channel jt and it's called is this a quickie that channel should have a whole lot of subscribers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, I don't know why it's not as big as it should be because I get my entire life over on that yeah. channel. Yeah. So, y'all go over there and show Mike B some love, the Kenneth some love, my Twisted Life of Poetry. Tell them we sent you all. And yeah. hopefully, they'll be able to make their numbers by right. this February 20th cutoff yeah. so that YouTube can stop tripping. Yeah, and all their channels are gonna be linked down in the panic section, like Lady, like Lady, Lady Nika said. Yes. Yeah, so let's yeah. get in. Um. Oh, and don't forget, cause we gotta act like we real um YouTubers and stuff. You know, because we're we're the most um decorated YouTubers out here that do reviews. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> That's what Monique said about her career. <laughs> Why can't I say it about Matt? This ain't even career. It's got no habit. So uh, um. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Make sure that you hit the bell. Make sure that the bell is all the way pushed in so you'll get the notifications when YouTube feel like giving them to you because they don't mm. all the time. Yeah, because you can put the bell on and they don't get no notifications. Yeah, and make sure you hit that like button because it does help us in the YouTube ad room. So, I will say, before I even get into this, Hannah. Yeah, you deliver. It's Hannah. about god darn time. I think we might be back. But I ain't, I, ain't gonna, gonna I, ain't, I ain't gonna get my hopes up. But this is a having to have not that we've been waiting on. Yeah. Right here. I've been, I've been waiting. I've right been here. Like, and I was tired as hell today. I, I, look. Yeah, I was like, you better give me something. Because I'm gonna be asleep. I actually, see, y'all, I really was hoping that because Agent Orange was on TV that we won't go have this tonight. <laughs> Tyler first said, but boo, Tyler said, get. I'm gonna make this money. I'm kidding. Tyler said, Y'all know most of y'all are Democrats uh, over I'm here. I'm a good guy. Liberals. Who on TV tonight? <laughs> I'm making I'm my money. I'm putting my show on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to this money. Everybody, Everybody mad. mad. Okay, so we start off old boy from last week. The guy that Candace was going to shake down. And we all came to the conclusion Candace was not going to sleep with this dude. She was going to rob him like she did other dude mm -hmm. week before. When he comes in the room and Hannah says, he needs to go because that's your dad. Okay, so now we at a point now where everybody like, huh, huh? huh? Old boy is looking at Hannah like, like, I don't know what the hell you talking about. He he was looking like I don't pay for a whole like, lot of pussy in my life. Yeah, I ain't never, I seen, ain't never seen you a day in my life. So this one I knew that something was up mm -hmm. because first of all, when you got somebody and you ready to shake them down for some info, you just not gonna let them leave up out of there. I said, Hannah let him leave out of that room a little bit too easy. Because yep. homeboy said, I'm out of here. I'm gone. I expected her to say, nah, thank you for your services, 
Kenneth or whatever your name was, but she ain't say but why nothing. Why you had to say Kenneth though? I know. Yeah. Because y'all know y'all Kenneths be full of it. <laughs> I love y'all, but shoot, like Lynette's, they be full of it too. Ah. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I was waiting for some identifying things to let us know that Kenna real, really did know this dude. Well, she don't. Nah, she ain't know him from a hole in the freaking wall, man. Because Benny started questioning her, Kenna started questioning, and I started questioning. And Hannah came up with the okie doke like we thought that she was going to do. A mm -hmm. couple of us was in the comments talking about some. She just said that to get that dude out the room. That's exactly, exactly what, she, what did. she did. She said, you know, no, he's not your father. And no, I don't know who your father is. And he could have been your father. That's the point I'm trying to make. You don't know that man from a can of paint. And you about to sleep with him. He could have been your daddy. I said, okay, because now that I said, you know what? All roads lead to Ford Motor Company when it comes to Tyler Perry. But didn't we all remember when Candace was singing that song, Hannah, can you please tell me <laughs> who my daddy is? And I she said, would and she would never give him never give him no rock no. So name. I said, how, how all of a sudden you know who her daddy is? So yeah. okay, so now that settles it. So then they going back and forth like they always do. So Hannah goes up on her high horse and she was like, You know what, baby, I don't know what's wrong with you. Just look me in my face and tell me what's wrong with you. You know, I had my skit back in the day, and I did a whole lot of stuff, but I ain't never sold my body to not nail man. <laughs> Candace looked at like, her and said, skit. Candace said, huh. I know a whore when I see one. Said, just because you didn't take no money don't mean they didn't get payment. Hey. I, I said, said, what? Okay. What? So then Candace did a shakedown on her. She said, listen, since you want to bring up the daddy game and you want to play with daddies around here, who is my daddy? Tell me who he is. Hannah said, you really want to know? So this is when Hannah went into an Oscar-worthy performance. Mm -hmm. And she went into her story about how she was out there one night in the club drinking Drink. with her friends, uh -huh. having Get a good in. old time. And they was walking home. And, you know, she lived two more blocks than the friends um, live. The friends went on to their doorsteps, but Hannah still had two more blocks. To get to her destination, she noticed that this was there was a man in between those two blocks that she had to pass. That have you ever ran into somebody that you the, their presence just tells it all? You know they're evil. You know something's up. You yeah. get that gut feeling. I mean, it's just like mm, okay, watch that sucker. Yeah, like James said, you gotta listen to that first mind. You do. Yeah. So Hannah knew that something was up with this dude. So Hannah realized that she couldn't find her keys. Hannah lived with her aunt. So Hannah got to the doorstep of her aunt's house, couldn't get in, of course, because she don't have the keys. Auntie ain't there. And I said, well, where the hell is your aunt at 3 o'clock in the guy doing morning? Yeah. Well, I found out Auntie was a motivational speaker. Yeah, she out there getting high all night long. No, nope. she said, she hey. was out there doing speeches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She was doing speeches at mm -hmm. two o'clock, two three o'clock in the morning. So she hadn't made it back in from her um from her from, from her, her gig her tour. from her gig. <laughs> so Hannah said that she got down on the porch, and she crept down on the porch so that the guy, when he walked by, he wasn't able to see her. So she said she stayed down on that porch for probably a few hours until her exactly. auntie came home high as a kite. She finally went in the house, got in her bed, and went to sleep. When she awakened. The dude was on top of her, raping her. Yeah. And the guy was like, if you make a sound, I'll kill you. you. Now, Hannah said the only thing that she could do was cry on the inside and look at that man's his, his eyes, his nose, and that lion tattoo that he had on his chest. Yeah. And she said from that point on, basically a part of her had just died. Mm -hmm. So then she went on to say how she, I don't know if she told her aunt. Or her aunt found out. She told her aunt. She okay. told her aunt what happened, and, and that's when they uh, found the law. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is what, what came to my mind, as Mike B would say. Because we know how the motivational speakers are. When they get real, real, real bad, uh -huh. did you sell Hannah to that dude? Because how did he get in the house? Or either, and why? Or either that, or like you said, either he, 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 was, knew, he, he was a friend in uh, the neighborhood. Family. And she came and knocked on the door and be like, you know, I ain't got nowhere to sleep tonight. Can I get there on the couch? And that was his way in. Yeah, it could have been too. So, yeah, Hannah's aunt found the Lord and Hannah found the Lord too. And, you know, it made her happy. You know, made her feel like, you know, she could live again. It was a breath fresh. Basically, it was a change. Yeah. That's what it was. 
So then she found out she was pregnant. And she's telling Candace the story. And the whole time, Candace, you can see that it's starting to get to her. She's starting to tear up. She's, I mean, she's locked in. Her eye, they are eye to eye. For, yeah. for once, they are eye to eye and they're not fighting. So, then she went on to tell her, she said, um, you know, but that's not it. Do you want to hear it all? And Candace was like, tell it. Tell, tell it, it all. all. She said, I didn't want you. I, I did lying. not want Ooh. you. I did not want to be pregnant with a rapist baby. I wanted to abort you. And Candace was looking like, okay, that's a bucked up thing to say. But I said, it's real. It's real. It's real. Yeah, it it's real. Yeah. So then she said, you know what? I went ahead and had you, obviously. And she said, when I felt you kick and when you came out, you were so beautiful, full of life, full mm -hmm. of joy. And she said, even though when I look in your face, I see his face. I see his eyes. I see his nose. I saw a light in you that he didn't have. Mm -hmm. She said, now, as time went on and you told me that you were raped and all of this stuff. And she said, that's when I realized I had to get saved all over again. Uh huh. <laughs> and I said, you know what? There is something that I want to hit on right there. Go ahead. But I'm just going to keep on going with the guy doing story. Now, let me tell y'all something. Y'all pray for Benny because they're taking Benny through change. It's all kind of change. He, man, he going to need cancer now after this. Benny was in that background going like this. He was like, I said, somebody get him a shot. Of, God, look, Benny. give him a shot of Everclear 151 or something. <laughs> just a little Have bit. About. Just a little bit, because that'll kill you. So, went on and on and on. And Hannah basically told her everything. And Candace had a moment where the, the water started just going. Mm -hmm. And then she looked at her mama and said, hmm. Wow. Great story, Great Hannah. Story. But I don't I believe, believe you. You can go. I said. She said, the only thing I believe when you said you abused me. But other than that, I don't believe that. Now. But I do appreciate that finally Hannah owned up to the fact that I haven't always treated you right. Mm hmm. I haven't always been kind to you. Yeah. I haven't always loved you the way that you should have been loved. And I apologize for that. And I yeah. do love you. I said, it's about frigging egg and time. But you know what I hate, though? But it always works out. But it's out on their time. It, yeah. It, it it always, it's almost like the stuff doesn't get resolved until there's a tragedy. And when it happens when it's a tragedy, sometimes it's hard to take it serious. Are you apologizing to me because... You want to do it, oh, yeah, or you no apologize to me because you're in an emotional state because of the trauma. Because, you know, uh, uh, Lil Quincy is dead. You know, you thinking about all this stuff. You done fucked up, so now you're trying to make it right because you think you're going to die. <laughs> you know how people do. They think they get ready to die because somebody else died. So they go around making it right with everybody, but you're only doing it because you're afraid. Mm -hmm. So Your how can I man yeah. up in 10 days? Are you yeah. still going to act the same? So I think the apology will, will be more genuine and better received if you do it when everything is normal. Mm -hmm. When you just come up one day and be like, I've been thinking, you know, I bucked you over. This is what happened. I apologize. You know, I hope you forgive me. If you don't, I understand and keep it moving. Yeah. But nah. Nah. Nah, you know. It don't what? use a work that way. If nah, you don't this forgive. What happens. This is what happens. Man, the doctor said, man, I got cancer real bad. Man. Mm -hmm. yep. I ain't got but six months to live, man. I need to make it right with you. Yep. And buck you yeah that's what happens fuck you yeah so what you, you're not gonna do is use me so that your conscience can be clear so that yep. you can make it in on that other side because what's gonna happen is see I, i'm one of them people i'm gonna let you know that it ain't all right so when you cross over you still gonna have me in the back of your goddamn mind because that's the way i am now you sound like rick ross rick ross said the lord forgive but i don't i don't <laughs> i do forgive <laughs> But I, I, I but, don't, I don't. But forgiveness, see, I, I for, think people teach forgiveness wrong. Forgiveness is is a process that a lot of people. You just sometimes you can forgive people just like this, but sometimes it takes some time to forgive people. Yeah. And don't let nobody rush you into forgiving somebody because you ain't doing nothing but hurting yourself. And you can forgive people and ain't gotta have a buck with them again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You just make sure that when you walk past them, that feeling don't hit you no more, because that's when you know it ain't gone. So, so the message is, if you have not fully forgiven somebody, don't feel bad. Yeah. You're just going through the process. Yeah, don't let nobody guilt you into that. Especially if the people keep doing the same thing over and over now, and that's over. that's the part. Now, that's, that's the, part. the part. That's the part. You keep on... Because I can't keep forgiving a demon. 
Or you keep on scratching on my on my scab that I'm trying to every time I get healed, you come and scratch the scab again. Then I got the process start, the healing process starts over all over again. Yeah. But we ain't coming to preach. Nah. This is a review. Nah. Keep moving. Because I roll I, camera. I charge people for this kind of advice. So I'd rather so, so so I say that to say this. I'd rather the Hannah would have came and told Candace this information outside of the tragedy of death. It would have been a whole lot more powerful. So this part tripped me. It tripped me out, but I understand it. Because these super saints do this. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> so when Candace told her mama, say, you can go ahead and go. Hannah takes her tail and sits down on the ottoman and she starts taking her shoes off. And I said, hold on, wait a minute. Don't you tell me you got you diabetic. Your feet messing up on you. Well, I was like, I thought she would get ready to say, but I, I, I knew what she did. But I thought they were going to put a twist and be like, I am going to stay right here until we get this thing right. She took their shoes and mm -hmm. I said, oh, she about to shake the dust That's off of her feet, feet uh -huh. and going on up out of here. And, and Candace was like, Matthew, what? Girl, what, what does that mean? And, and Benny was looking like, I don't know that scripture, but I, I know that it means something about her about to walk out of your life. <laughs> you know, I ain't go to that Sunday school class. <laughs> so did she with her and, and left but, her body. But that kind of ruined the moment. It did. So it's like, okay. Because I gave it you my on yeah, her turn. Yeah, I gave you my story. I brought this letter around here. I laid on thick. Your son said we need to get it right. I told you the story. Now you need to just forget about all the stuff we did. Forget about it. We need to move forward. And because you do it, I'm gonna throw a scripture at you. So <laughs> I'm gonna dust the uh, freaking um, shake the dust off my feet and roll. Yeah. And it's supposed to be all right with your soul. Okay. Anywho, so this is the part. Now, I can appreciate Tyler. Like, I give Tyler a hard time. And trust me, if I ever meet Tyler in person, I, it ain't going to change. I'm going to tell him what I got to tell him. Yeah. That sometimes your stuff is full of skit. Mm -hmm. But when you do it, you do it. Yeah. And this is what I appreciate. I'm ashy, y'all. I just got out the bathtub. Um, that got done, Benny. Once they got home. Hannah was having a moment. She realized that um old boy that fixed the sink, he don't wash dishes, did yeah. all that stuff. So Ben is like, Mama, about all that that you just threw up in that daggone hotel room, I want to let you know that I I forgive you. You know I believe. I believe you. what you said. Um, but Mama, have you ever talked to somebody about that? I talked to King Jesus. I talked to the Lord. I, I knew she was going to say that. I, said, I knew she was going to say that. Benny said, no. Did you talk to a counselor, yeah, a professional? A man a, in the flesh. About what you just yeah. told your daughter and myself that happened to you. She said, and with what money? What money, yeah. Hold on. Did, don't even worry about Lynette. I was like, you know, didn't you say you got you went to a church and and, and so you gonna go to a church where your your pastor ain't equipped to? Don't even worry about it. Huh? Yeah, um, that's what that, that's what I was thinking. All right, and I bet you you were paying tithes. You paying tithes to somebody that can't cancel? Look, it's it's good to talk to the Lord. I don't have nothing against that. I ain't got a problem with that either. Yeah, but that's, yeah. he put people here. But he put people here to help us yeah. get through. Cause sometimes you need that physical touch. Well, in this case, she don't need no physical touch. Now, when I when I, <laughs> now, when I say I I'm not that. talking sexually, I'm just talking physical touch. She need that too. Of somebody actually being there to help you work through all your feelings and stuff. Cause right now she ain't doing no more taking all her anger out on Candace. Yeah. Yeah. See what Hannah is doing, and this is what a whole lot of people doing. See, I'm about to we I'm about to give you something for free. Y'all better soak it up, cause I be charging. No, they gonna drop them ties and offers in that bucket at the end of this end of this review. Hey, hey, y'all, uh -huh. y'all start getting them baskets up. Yeah, start moving them to the front. Um, this is what happens, and it happens with a lot of people, and it happens with a lot of people in church. How do I know? Because I am a person that have dealt with, canceled, did all of this stuff with people that are in church that deal with the same exact things. People come to church because the church is a hospital. Most people come out of something happening. You know, you just want to feel like get someone loves you. You get a, you know, you need a peace of mind. You uh -huh. need a change. You need a, but, but underneath all of that, there's always this gaping wound. Mm -hmm. And what church does, church puts a, 
ace bandage over it. They put a little um, um, A and D ointment on it so that you can start to scab over. Mm -hmm. So what happens is instead of us dealing with the infection that's going on on the inside of us, while we got this thing that's covering our wound so that's that right. we can go through a process of healing, yeah, we get comfortable with the bandage. Yeah. So then once the bandage is peeled away, Mm -hmm. And you peek your holy head out into this real world and out into these real streets. Yep. You don't know what else to do. Yep. But speak the Lord. Speak faith. Do all of this. But underneath, you still an infected, bloody mess. That's right. With a scab over top of it. And you know how to put on that nice church face to make people think you all right. You know how to shout over it. You know how to fast over it. You know how to do all that over top of all that. Uh huh. And when you get home, you still suffering in silence. Suffering in silence. You and look all right. Thing. Yeah. But, but you, you still ain't all right. In silence. Yep. And I want them people, don't fake it. Uh, -uh. I'd rather for you to come to me and say, hey, I'm toe down today. Mm hmm. I can work with you toe down. But what I can't do is work with you. Girl, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. The Lord is. I know he's all of that. Yep. I know that. But what is going on with that? Mm -hmm. We need to fix that. Okay. All right. Now, we're going to get on back into now, now, this might make some saints real mad right here. Uh, we don't care about that. Yeah. A praise don't fix everything. No. I'll come let you know. It make you feel better, but it don't fix everything. See, this is what I think about yeah, praise. It, it don't fix everything. This is, this is what praise is. You know how when you go to Baskin Robbins or you go to Cold Stone or whatnot and you get your favorite ice cream or whatnot, you get your toppings on it, but it's something about, even if you don't eat it, something about that cherry on top. Yeah. It seals the deal. It lets you know that it is finished. <laughs> Once you put that cherry on, ooh, it's complete. That's when I want to see your best praise. When this sucker is complete, mm -hmm. and I do a praise for real. Now, some of us will do a praise because I just need to get Sam's, through it. I need to get that emotional. Sam, Sam. I'm completely healed. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and get on. But you can praise through the process. You can praise through yeah, the process. You can praise through the process. But, yeah. but, but don't, don't fake it. Why is we up on here preaching? I don't know. Hannah started it. Hannah started now, it. Hannah started it. Yeah, I need to go bless somebody real quick. We need to talk about David down at this FEMA jail, man. Yeah, did the, the, the FEMA jail get an upgrade, y'all? It kind of started looking like the, the jail up on... Um, um, Don't talk... Mm, how would you it, know? Huh? You talking about in real life? No! Oh, I could say, how would you know? No, nah, if loving you is wrong. Oh, you oh, know it's oh, the same jail? The only one they don't have a gorilla cage in this one, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the one they had, what you call it up in there? Julius. They ain't got that gorilla cage up in there. Yeah, we in Julius. Still in that gorilla cage? <laughs> So, yeah, we got David down at the FEMA jail. Now, this is the part that confused me because he goes up and asks the officer, listen, I need to see my son. Well, he didn't say my son. I said, yeah, make sure that this ain't no conflict of interest. I need to see Jeffrey Harrington. Well, of course, you know, you got to get a DA clearance before he's able to go in there because he's representing, he's presenting himself like he's his lawyer. Lawyer, yeah, not his daddy. But this is the part that confused me. Don't David and Jim basically run that freaking town? When it comes to the court system around that, they the judges. Don't nobody recognize them? Well, they did until until today. <laughs> they not on the letterhead. <laughs> they not on the stamp on the seal. <laughs> I don't mean to tell me that David and Jim's face, their, their profile pic ain't up on some wall like this. Got to be. What? You mean tell me you don't know? You don't know Dick. You don't know. You don't know about them Harrington boys. David, well, you know when you've been sitting there with us for a long time, when he came out his suit coat, he was pissed off. He went over there, I've been sitting out here for hours. <laughs> you put your hands up. I've been sitting out here for hours. That's what the thug came about. Yeah, up. I've been sitting out here for hours. <laughs> Is it, get, call the DA again. <laughs> Dude said DA busy. They busy. I said, like, well, what? One, one DA is dead. <laughs> So that's why she ain't asking for if you try to call Salisbury State, you and ain't. Ever you know George gonna, gonna give them a run for their money. George is over there in Chinatown. <laughs> so he calls, David calls Jim. Told Jim, said, hey, do you know anybody down in the DA? I said, don't 
Don't you supposed to know somebody? Did? Yeah, like y'all y'all judging y'all don't know nobody? Well, Jim said, you know Catherine's dad is um name still it got weight right here in these streets. So what you need to do is call her. I can't call her because she could be pissed off even more if I call yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Call her, tell her to put in a favor to see if she could work that thing out. Call Catherine. Catherine said, oh, yeah, I can call such and such. I can make it happen. Yeah. And then Catherine went ahead and said, you know, I can't believe your wife put that boy in jail like that. If she had died in that accident, it would just make both of our lives better. Jim was like, uh, what? Jeff, uh, uh, B uh, what the name? David, David was like, huh? Accident? What accident? She said it don't matter. And he was uh, like, and she hung the phone up. <laughs> and David was looking like it don't even matter either. I said, well, darn. He really gives no bucks right now. I mean, would you give a buck if I tried to burn you up in here? <laughs> no. Set you on fire in the bed like she did him? <laughs> but she did give a buck right after that. He tried. <laughs> I said, oh my God. So now we got um, old boy trying to get with um Hannah. Derek. 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 See, see, this is the thing about, about, about Hannah. And I'm about to piss some of y'all saints off again. That's okay. I'm sorry. Some of y'all, see, y'all always say that y'all don't like when people use the Lord's name to make y'all do stuff. But some of y'all, that's the only way y'all would do stuff is somebody put a Lord said on it. Yeah. This man, look, Hannah don't had two good men. Mm -hmm. What's the other boy named that the granddaughter was was met, got killed by God, Wyatt? God, don't Michael. Know. Michael, yeah, because her high was in the air with Michael. Yeah, she almost gave Michael something. Yeah. Bennett was the one that he was the cock blocker. That was Bennett, yeah. Michael was a decent dude. Okay, now we got Derek. He don't came over there fixed the guy doing sink. Wash your dishes. Wash dishes. And now he wants to take you out for coffee. And you talking about something. No. Now what Derek should have said was, the Lord told me uh -huh. that you gonna be my wife. Yep. And in order for us to get to know each other, I need and to go, take you out for get coffee. Some coffee. I bet she, you. She would have been like, oh yeah? Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Okay. That okay. resonated with my spirit. Uh huh. Okay. See, that's handle the ones that you got to put a lower said on them to make them move. <laughs> and if some of y'all say something, raise your hand if you know what's saying. We're going to call it the Lord said saints. <laughs> yeah. And some of them won't do nothing until you tell them the Lord. You know what? The Lord told me to tell you to go down there and pay your light bill. For real? Oh yeah? You know, because I was three I was three months behind, and they was getting ready to shut it off. And you gave me a word. She asked me, I'm going to pay it. I said, you know what? Don't even worry about it. You know, it don't even matter. It don't even matter. So, um, Demonica, how about she going to call Benny? And they'll talk Benny into coming back down to the hospital to see her. Talk about something. I'm indebted to you. I, I'm thinking that she really starting to like Benny for real because at but this point. But did you see him light up? Yeah, but at this point because, I mean, I don't see what he, she could benefit from it. He, he broke. He got to catch a ride to the he hospital. He got to catch a ride to the hospital. I mean, you know, he trying to get his little trucking business, um, towing business back up and running. So I was like, what? So now he got to get money from the Malones for the truck and for counseling. Because cause Hannah said, if you pay for the counseling, I'll go. I said, that's going to be a lot of money because she going to need a few sessions. You better call Ayala so she can get you in. Mm -hmm. Like 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 JT See. said, so she can rock you in your bo in her bosom. Yes. yes. And say, let it out, baby. Say, it'll be let free. It get on the show. Come here, beloved. She going to call her a gutter snipe. Mm -hmm. A nasty Gotta snipe. Bow! So, Candace, once all of this was said and done, when Hannah left the room and whatnot, Candace really did have a breakdown moment. And I said, well, maybe this is going to be the turning point for Candace, and maybe there's going to be an, uh, something made out of this. Uh-uh. Candace went right back into pimp mode. And you remember the girl from last week that they knew was a new prostitute on the block that mm -hmm. didn't know who she was messing with and didn't know what the vice was? Some kind of way she ended up in Candace's hotel room. Yeah. And Candace basically changed the girl's name to my bottom B. Told her that your work hours is going to be this. Your work mm. days is going to be this. Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, I own you. I will protect you. Call Erica. She'll get you some clothes. I will call somebody to get you a new weave. And we're going to make about 10, 10 G's a, a night. night. And the girl was like, say what? This ain't what I do. Candace said, Un unlock your phone. The girl said, I'm not doing that. This ain't what I do. Walk up. 
smack. She I'm forever smacking somebody. She said, don't let, don't make me have to ask you to do something twice again. But the girl asked a prime question. She was like, why if why you don't do it yourself and make the 10 grand? And she said, I'm moving on to bigger and better things. Pimping. She said, pimping? She said, yes, pimping. So now Candace got another one under her belt. I said, oh, Lord, here we go. So Justin Timberlake, listen, that boy done lost his everlasting mind. See, really, this part, I thought he was going into the FEMA jail and get Jeffrey out because finally David had a way to see him. Yeah. But no, he pulls him out of the jail, out of the cell one more time because of the whole Wyatt thing. Because Wyatt called the telephone. He wants to know what's going on between him and Wyatt. And then this fool had the nerve to say, you can disrespect me like this, do that. After all, I don't sacrifice for you and us. I'm out here looking for a An partner. partner for us. Jesse. I was like, since when did Jeffrey say that y'all was a couple or an us? What? Jefferson, see, you taking this too goddamn far. But then Wyatt calls on the goddamn telephone. And um, Justin Timberlake put it on speaker. Wyatt said, Jeffrey, what is going on with that crazy dude? Is that your <laughs> love or something? So, Je you know, Justin, he chimes in. Um, What are you talking about? Da, 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 da. So then Wyatt, gonna, Wyatt made it work. And few to the five. Wyatt say, you know yeah. what? Y'all can't be lovers. Can we hear the lovers? lovers. That's yeah. my book. Yeah, I we said. need to go and tell him. Jeffrey, we need to go and tell him. I said... That sent Justin Timberlake all the way off the meter this time, boy. I knew it. I knew y'all were messing around. What about them emails? Who you them sending them emails? It's like, oh, so he going to do Jeffrey phone now? I told you that's what he was going to do. So now, Jeffrey was like, you know what? Take me back to my cell. Homeboy said, I'll take you back, but I'll take you back blood if you don't give me the answers that I want. Jeffrey, I'd like to see you try it. I said, oh, he done got turned on by that a little bit. Then next thing we know. He was choking Jeffrey out and it went off. I said, you know what? Say what? Last week I said I don't care if Justin kills Wyatt. But I'm going to reverse that this week. I'm just trying Wyatt to... Wyatt kill him. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how did Justin go from picking up Jeffrey in the squad car, going at him because he was gay, calling him names... To this. You want to know why? I'm going to raise my hand. All right, go raise your hand. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. You in. When you got a person that's always drilling in on something, that's always zeroed in on something, that every time you look, their, their target is gay, 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 gay. Whatever that is that they always are just like, you can't get them to zero off of, that's what they are. Mmm. That's what they are. Mm, they just fighting it. Yeah. When I see people on YouTube and that's all they do and they they sit there and just go on these this, that, and the that, and they're going to go to hell and they're going to do this and they're going to do it. Come on up out of there. Come on out the closet. We fall down. <laughs> we did that we up. Have y'all ever seen that? I can't think of who it is. He said, Donnie, come on out that closet. I can't even, I can't even think of that. <laughs> I can't think it's That's that. what it is. Usually what you hate you the most or what you act like you don't like the most and what you spend your attention it's, it's, on it's is something, that, you really want it's to something that you're fighting. Yeah. Find Good me a point. dude that ain't fighting against homosexuality all the time and I'll show you. Don't even worry about it. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty sound. Two up. Two down. Holla.